Silverbacks to Silver Foxes, Jay Monahan had a press mm. conference today for the first time since the tour championship that was in August and he had a prepared statement. He answered some questions, most of them coming around the PIF to be or not to be. Uh, I know all three of us or all four of us were, were tied into this. Uh, Greg, we'll, we'll start here with you. Uh, I've got the takeaways. I've got some significant quotes from, from Jay in regards to, uh, any potential relationships with Piff and everything else, but is there a certain spot you want to start? Anything that stood out to you? Well, I'll start with just a general kind of overview. I think there are some specifics that you need to get into, but as I walk away from this press conference, it just feels like an incredibly difficult spot for Jay Monahan. This feels like he ha is getting pulled in a thousand different directions and what people want from him is not possible. So he want people want transparency, but we're in the middle of a negotiation and we can't share any details. Um, they want to know what it's going to look like with SSG, but that's brand new and we really don't know what that's going to look like yet. Um, so those conversations are going on and we can't really release those details. So at every um, at every question that's asked, the big questions that we all want to know the answers to, there are no answers at this point. Uh, and that's an extremely difficult position to be in. Uh, and then you add to that, you have 200 members of the PGA Tour, like we talked about on, I believe, on Sunday. They all seem to want different things. Uh, and that becomes extremely challenging as well. So it felt to me as I leave this, like this is a bad time for this kind of press conference. <clears throat> and it's been a bad time for this kind of press conference for the last year and a half, uh, maybe more. I mean, it feels like forever. So, you know, what is this tour championship press conference going to look like? I feel like the can has been kicked down the road and we're kind of in the exact same position that we were before the press conference, which is unfortunate. Um, and it's unfortunate for us. It's unfortunate for Jay because that's not necessarily easy news to deliver. The quote uh, that Jay Monahan likes to use that refers to to what Greg is talking about quote you can't you can't negotiate a deal like this in public, Patrick. That's basically saying uh, no comment, buzz off. Um, I'll let you know when when you need to know. It seems that he is still optimistic about a deal getting done with the PIF as well. He said, uh, quote, our negotiations are accelerating as we spend time together, talking about his time with Yasser. They uh, they went to Saudi Arabia, I believe in January was what I saw. So he he is still uh, laying the foundation for, for more partnerships. Yeah, that's a very kind way of putting it, I think, Rick. And... I, uh, Greg, I agree that it's a very difficult spot for Monahan, but he really has no one to blame but himself. I'm not talking about, you know, could he have answered the call earlier in his tenure? I'm talking about the June 6th rollout where you roll out just a boatload of question marks and you don't even know what you're doing except getting a softball Q&A from Becky Quick on CNBC with Yasser by your side. When, when you're a leader you're supposed to pretty much do two things, provide a vision and provide answers. And Jay Monahan has blurred both of those all while somehow working his way up the totem pole and now being the CEO of PGA tour enterprises. So it is a very difficult position. You can't negotiate a deal in public. That's known. I know players are upset about that. Media members would like more answers. Absolutely. But you can't. So I do feel Jay Monahan, from that regard. But at the end of the day, it's one person's fault that he's in this position and it's Jay Monahan's. Well, that's what I always found interesting. KP is that I always thought at the very least there was a conflict of interest when you are negotiating to get yourself a new CEO job later on down the road. That's, that's just one part of it. Here's a, here's another quote though, uh, from Jay. I do believe that negotiating a deal with the PIF is the best outcome. I think an ultimate deal would be in the best interest of the game and ultimately would be in the best interest of the tour. It's pretty explicit. Yeah, I thought I, I'll get to the negative later. I thought he was actually 
pretty optimistic and maybe even a little bit uh, encouraging as it relates to the PIF deal, because, you know, you, we've heard from Tiger and, and Spieth and some other guys over the last couple of months and you reading between the lines, you're like, I, I don't, I don't think they're into this. I think they're like out on this actually. And I thought Monahan was actually a lot more measured and pretty, pretty good on the PIF stuff. Um, I think that might've been the only thing that he was decent. I, uh, you know, save me the like, just buzzword salad of like unlocking global synergy or whatever, whatever that was about. Now he did say global, which was, that was, that was, an, that was, that was interesting, interesting, right? right? Am I, Am I, are you guys, guys getting feedback, feedback on me? On me? Hold on, hold on. You're echoing a little bit. Is it better now? I don't know. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I think that was my fault. That's, <laughs> that's completely on me. Yes. I thought, um, I did think that that was interesting he, that he said the word global because unless he thinks the PGA Tour is doing a great job of uh, committing to the global game right now, which he might, but I think most people would think that they're not. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, do, do you want me to go negative or do you want to like go, go back around again? Um, go negative. We'll start with you. We'll just we'll look back around that way. Okay. We'll snake draft it. Uh, <laughs> negative. <laughs> He, I thought his disposition sucked. Like I thought just, it, it's like, man, you only answer questions like two or three times a year. And he's like losing his cool and losing his patience with, first of all, people that have mostly defended the PGA Tour for the last three years, which is just like, that feels kind of, kind of crazy. Um, he kind of lost it about the ROM thing. Um, what was what was the other thing, Patrick, that he he got frustrated about? Do you remember? Uh, it was an additional PIF question. You know, concerns if PIF if what's the scariest thing if PIF doesn't go through or something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, and I get it. Like he he's he's he got he got the same question like ten times. I I understand that you're frustrated, but. Just and you and you you don't pick this up through a soundbite or through a, a transcript if you read the transcript, but Rick, if you watch him for like 20, 30, 40 minutes, he just he almost doesn't even like his inflection points are all wrong. Like he he's just and and, and I realize that that's a very like woo woo like it doesn't matter type thing, but it kind of does. Like, I don't, I don't watch him and I don't know that anybody watches him and thinks, man, I'm, I'm, I'm in on this guy. Like, I want to follow this guy, you know? And, and so to me, disposition matters. I thought he was, I thought there was just some hubris in there, some arrogance, you know, he got asked about Rom and it was like, whatever, like player championship, strongest field in golf. And you're like, I know you're not the commissioner of professional golf, but as a fan, I'd love to hear like, yeah, it stinks that John Rahm and Cam Smith are not here. And we're really working hard to unify all these groups going forward because we'd love it if we had all the best players at the players championship. I, I just, wouldn't that be pretty easy? You're, you're Too easy. It, that, that's the thing. What, what is like, he's had eight months. He, the last time he spoke in front of, uh, media members was eight months ago. Mm -hmm. Add time. What's the PR strategy? And if you're bending, no offense, Kyle, if you're bending and getting frustrated by golf media, <laughs> I cannot even imagine the conversations and answers that took place in Saudi Arabia. I'm sorry. That, that was, that was funny. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think these guys are leaning heavily on SSG and you're like, I, I hope that works out for you. You know, I, I, I just, and, and then the last, the third thing, and this is not a Jay Monahan issue. It's just a pro pro golf issue that we've talked about a million times. It's like, we're talking about all this stuff and it's like, we're not even, he did, we're, we're not even talking about the pinnacle of the sport, which is the majors. Like that's not even mentioned in all of this. And it's like that, ha like in the hierarchy of, of all, like the way that we even discuss this, that has to sort of um, 
contextualize everything else and it's not even being discussed and there's no I, i'm not blaming jay for that there's no incentive for him to talk about the major championships on the week of the players but that's just a broad like pro golf is broken type type take that was really kind of accentuated during his press conference xander shawfley greg was uh pretty clear with how he feels about jay monahan he doubled down on Basically what he said a couple of months ago, he said, uh, trust is a tender thing and he's got a long way to go referring to Jay Monahan regaining his trust. I mean, that's top 10 player on your tour where the guy who's in charge of the future of the tour and the future of the entity, the new entity, uh, doesn't have the trust of at least one guy. Ah. Uh. You know what? This one is uh, frustrating in a couple ways to me. One, first and foremost, like Rick, you just mentioned that you shouldn't be bending because of questions from the golf media, right? What is Xander Shoffley complaining about? <laughs> I mean, th think about that. He, he is playing in the Players' Championship this week. Two years ago, the Players' Championship purse was the biggest in golf at, what, $12.5 million? Two years later, for the second year in a row, it's at $25 million. He has a chance to win $4.5 million this week playing golf, playing a golf tournament. What is the, like, what drives you to lose all this trust? Um, things have gotten a lot better on the PGA Tour if you're a player. They have not if you're a fan. They have if you're a player. Scotty Scheffler last year made, what before bonuses, what, $21 million in official money? I mean, that's a fifth of what Tiger Woods made in his entire career in one year. So there's a little bit, there's a, there's a big part of me that says, hey, let's pump the brakes with these complaints. If you're a player, like we want to unite the game. Well, the players on the PGA Tour need to unite. That's first and foremost. Then when it comes to trust, again, I go back to what I said in, in earlier in let's call them my opening remarks, this <laughs> difficult position <laughs> that Jay Monahan is in. How it it's so difficult to regain trust when you can't tell people what is happening. Now, it, uh, is, is there a leader in the world that could handle that? Um, I'm sure there is, but it's a really hard thing to do. Like in everything that I've read about leadership uh, and everything that I've experienced in my own life about leadership and, and building trust, uh, being open and being honest are the, number one ways to do it. Um, you could argue the only ways to really do it. And Jay's in a position where the only way for him to be honest is to not be transparent. He can't give away details. So if he's going to keep and maintain the trust of the people he's negotiating with or his board, then in order to keep that trust, he has to keep things close to the vest. He can't tell people things. He can't let things leak out. Whereas when he wants to build and regain trust with his players, he has to tell them what's going on. Right? So you're going to break trust somewhere. You're going to gain trust somewhere. And that's a hard position to be in. Mm -hmm. but, but isn't there, mm -hmm. isn't there Patrick? And I agree with Greg. Yep. Trust is transparent. It is open. It is honest. Even if you can't divulge everything, isn't there a big difference between the complete 180 on of June 6th and not just coming out afterwards and saying listen guys I'm really sorry I had to do it that way I had to you know pull the wool over your eyes because I I'm I think this is the best path forward yes maybe I screwed up I'm sorry I can't it's just it's just been unapolo unapologetically brash uh ego i don't know man it just really rubs me the wrong way first greg 
cool down, young man. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> heat check. Heat check, sir. That was that was electric. I agree with everything you just said. Uh, as for... Now disagree with me. <laughs> as for... As, as for che- yeah, build you up and then tear you down. Uh, uh, he, he has, you know, for how arrogant he came across at some points today, he has apologized for the rollout. He apologized to Andrew Ross Sorkin at the Field Book <laughs> Summit. Uh, he, he's got the Max Scherzer eyes, two different colors. I watch them every morning on CNBC. They're getting a lot of run on this program. Yeah, you're, uh, you're, you're homies at CNBC. You, yeah. you got affiliate links over there or what? I wish. I wish. Uh, he, he said sorry today. I think uh, Dan Rappaport asked him if he regretted anything. He said June 6th for sure. But Look, if he could go back in time and change everything and he said something along the lines, he would. And that'd be great. But you can't. And because of that, he has dealt this hand of the conundrum Greg just laid out of you need to be transparent. You need to be trustworthy. You need to build that trust back up from everyone on the PGA Tour, tour, the entire membership from Rory McIlroy down to, you know, Joe Schmo, whoever it might be. Uh you know, probably like Jason Duffner or someone. Uh, and but but you can't. Your hands are tied because if you do that, you lose the trust of the businessmen that you're working with. So it, it's an impossible situation that Jay Monahan is in. But at the end of the day, you know who he can blame for it. Jay Monahan. So there you have it. There's well, just one one more thing I'd like to add on this. You consider June sixth. Um, it also bothers me that the players are so bothered by June 6th because the only thing that came out of June 6th was a lawsuit stopped and nothing else happened. There's a negotiation that's apparently ongoing and it makes you uncomfortable because you don't know what's really going on, but would it have been a terrible move? Look at this from 30,000 feet. Would it have been a terrible move to announce June 6th and do nothing with it? and not get involved with the public investment fund. If you're the PGA tour that has claimed the, you know, the gone down the human rights path with the public investment fund, uh, and you're just kind of playing this, I mean, you're at war with a foreign entity that is a sovereign nation, right? I mean, they're, they're doing business at a level that is far beyond what the PGA tour is doing what professional golf or any professional sport is doing. And so there's some things that like you got to kind of let them play the game a little bit. If you're a player and sometimes in leadership, you have to give people what they need, not necessarily what they want. And in my opinion, looking at what the players have gotten as a result of all this, they've gotten what they need. They are the big winners here. And I I know that they want trust, but take a step back and understand the situation. It's not in the best interest of anybody to air all this out in public. So like, what is it that you want him to do to regain your trust? I, I have a really hard time understanding that. Last word, KP, if you want to. Yeah. It, it, what makes it more convoluted, Greg, is it's not just it's not just Monaghan negotiating. It's the, the players and invo- like tiger involved. And he's having to like, sort of speak on behalf of tiger, but also be part like that. That's unenviable. Like that sucks. That that's very difficult. You can lose me on all the Xander stuff. Like I'm good on that. Uh, I, I said this to Patrick earlier. I, the thing that really like, first of all, why is Zan- why does Xander why did why does Cantlay have a have a press conference? Why do either of those guys have press conferences? It's top players on the PGA tour. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, do something, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, the thing that irritates me about Xander is you get these guys. I mean, he, he's such a he's such a lightweight when it comes to like the the two like we talked about this with Taylor Cooch, right? Uh, if you're Brooks Kepka, you got you got five of them. Like you can you can say some stuff, and it has impact. If you're Xander and you've won like 
four team events and a travelers like it you, you don't carry any weight it doesn't matter it, it is meaningless and yet not only does he say stuff but he like all these guys say like oh well jay's lost the, some of the players trust and and they're sort of, the implication is like i'm in that group that doesn't trust him anymore xander says oh you've jay has personally lost my trust like he like he's like the most important one in this whole thing and it's like yeah i'm good on that like i'm i'm I've, I've had enough of that. 